In Britain, the large de Havilland Aircraft Company, which had produced some of the fastest British planes used in the war, were also quick to explore German innovations. Within two weeks of the end of the war, in May 1945, my boss and other colleagues went to Germany to interview senior uh, people in their aircraft design industry, uh, just to see what they've been up to. John Wimpany's boss returned with some exciting discoveries from the German research. They had realized that if you swept the wing back, you could delay the effects of uh, the speed of sound and the compressibility by significant amounts. De Havilland now had to discover how fast they could go using swept wings. John Wimpany helped adapt the pioneering de Havilland Vampire Jet to create a revolutionary experimental aircraft. It had all the potential to beat the world speed record and it had the possibility of breaking the sound barrier. The cancellation left one British team still in the race. John Wimpany watched nervously as the graceful DH-108 Swallow made its first flight. Well, naturally, one can't help feeling it. Um, butterflies in the tummy. I'd be dishonest if I, if I said otherwise. <laughs> you see the aircraft take off fairly rapidly, diminishes to a little speck in the sky. And then, of course, you wait to see this little speck reappear from the opposite direction when it's coming into land. The Swallow proved capable of very high speeds flown by de Havilland's chief test pilot and son of the company's founder, Geoffrey de Havilland, Jr. Geoffrey was big, hearty, I mean, he was a pretty solid chap and a delightful personality, easygoing, a brilliant pilot. De Havilland, Jr. loved pushing the first truly swept-wing jet to its limits. The 3,000-pound thrust engine quickly powered its sleek shape to within sight of the world speed record of 616 miles per hour. On the 27th of September, 1946, de Havilland took off on a practice run for the record-breaking attempt. In a sunny late afternoon, he climbed through the clouds. His aim was to dive to speeds at the very edge of the sound barrier and see how the swallow handled at full power. He dived from 10,000 down to 7,000 feet. And he was doing a Mach number of 0.875. This was almost 90% of the speed of sound as fast as any aircraft had safely managed to fly at that time. And then suddenly the aircraft starts doing this as it goes along. The aviation doctors say that that will induce unconsciousness in 10 seconds. And it built up to such degree that the, the wings were given too much of a load and broke off. And it is almost certain that his head struck the canopy in one of these oscillations and broke his neck. The swallow's wreckage was scattered across the Thames estuary. Geoffrey de Havilland Jr.'s body was washed up near Whitstable. The sound barrier had claimed another victim. The news of the death of, of Geoffrey de Havilland, of course, was very, very uh, 
devastating. Everyone was very, very sad about that. But nevertheless, one simply had to press on if one really felt that uh, it was worthwhile. So you don't give up. The swallow would still play a key role in Britain's battle with the barrier. Everybody else in the business, of course, was acutely aware of, of what happened to the British and Geoffrey de Havilland. And in fact, that reinforced the idea that this sonic wall is something to be treated with great respect.